here, shifting attention can shift the ERP, cortical distribution. Here, there's a visual field. They're, they're staring at the dot in the middle of the visual field, but they're paying attention to the left side of everything they're looking at. So they're literally staring at the dot, but they're paying attention to everything on the left. What happens, the right side of the back of the head lights up with electronegativity. If they then shift their attention, not their focus, which will stay on the dot, but they shift their attention to the right hemifield, suddenly the left side of the back of the head lights up with electronegativity. So this is an example of turning on and off these locations. You can plot the dipoles. I mean, there's all sorts of tricks you can play with that data. But literally, the cortex, you can identify the areas that are turned on based on attention being paid. So how many ERP cycles does it take to be conscious? Well, it takes more than one because we know when we pair two stimuli, stimulus A and stimulus B, when we pair them, uh, the enhancement of the ERP takes place. The DC field potential difference is measured as attention. We showed that just a second ago with a shifting of attention. Uh, you, you can literally light up different areas. But um, when you shift the attention around, you can end up with a phenomenon called mismatched negativity. When you present two stimuli and the response differs, you can end up seeing the, the one stimulus and the next stimulus having a, a difference wave. And that mismatch negativity is linearly related to attention. Let's look at some attention deficit disorder kids. Normal, high functioning, medium functioning, and low functioning ADD. Measured by a CPT test. I mean, this is performance on a CPT test. Good performers, bad performers and a fully normal individual. These are all ADD, this is a normal. Well, the difference wave here is this big red uh, um, uh, uh, wave shape. And it, sh uh, excuse me, it's the, the black wave shape. The green is go, red is no go, and uh, so it's a go, no go task, which is a CPT task. And uh, the difference wave is in black. The black, uh, uh, size of the black lines here uh, can be measured and uh, it can be plotted as a red dot um, so you can see where in the brain it's being played. The normal functioning person lights up this spot uh, when they're doing a CPT task. The same exact spot is used. It's not more latent. It's not a timing issue. The same exact spot, same exact time, but less juice. You know. The ADD person is paying less attention with DC field potentials, and it's weaker and weaker and weaker as they become a more uh, degraded performer. This is a fun one. Um, uh, Edelman uh, wrote in 2001 that the mismatch negativity data suggests that in a conscious person the recent past is continuously compared to the perceptual stream. And uh, this suggests that consciousness is really the remembered present. <laughs> uh, it takes one perceptual cycle to encode something into your memory and your next perception is now compared to it. And it's that comparison that ends up being the remembered present. Now, um, we know that the frontal lobe and the dorsolateral areas of the frontal lobe will hold a, an echoic memory trace for up to about 10 seconds or so uh, very easily. And uh, uh, this frontal lobe phenomenon uh, ends up uh, um, uh, suggesting that this area frontally is, is needed to temporarily hold the memory of the first perception, and then you compare your current perception with your recalled perception, and only then can you become consciously aware. The first time the ERP hit the frontal lobes was conscious of the, uh, uh, you were aware of the stimulus, but you weren't consciously aware of the stimulus. 
Conscious Awareness, uh, Libet's work uh, in San Francisco in 1979, uh, suggested that conscious awareness is delayed by about 500 milliseconds from the stimulus. You're not really consciously aware of anything for a half a second from the time it's presented. And if you do the math, you say, listen, Jay, P300 plus P300 is 600, not 500. The math doesn't work. Well, it's only the frontal arrival the second time, which only takes 200 milliseconds of the second cycle. So the first cycle is 300 milliseconds. The second cycle arrives frontally at 200 milliseconds. You total up the time, and you hit 500 milliseconds. So literally, the second cycle of the ERP hitting the frontal lobe is required for conscious awareness to happen. And the timing is exactly, precisely correct for uh, 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 all of this great literature to knit itself together. This leaves us only with the problem of binding, and in the literature, um, the only system really fast enough to do the binding is the DC field potentials. And it's not gamma. And again, this is, uh, this is the blasphemy of neuroscience at this point. Um, this is not considered classically uh, accepted. It's an emergent um, uh, idea. Um, it's well accepted in a whole bunch of uh, uh, different labs. Uh, however, uh, it, it, most people are still talking about gamma as the binding rhythm. But again, it's, it's too slow to actually bind anything. So initiated by the DC fields millisecond synchronization effect, the phase reset that, that's done, we can see a bispectral relationship between gamma and DC during consciousness. Well, whoa, 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 back up a little bit here. What's this bispectral relationship stuff? Well, it's a cross-spectral correlation. Normally, you are correlating alpha with alpha at two spots and calling it coherence. This is looking at very slow activity and very fast activity at the same spot and correlating them. And uh, it's called the bispectral relationship or the cross-spectral correlation. Well, when gamma, which is neural networks being bound, this is the neurons, when gamma and neurons end up interacting with the DC field potentials, which are glial, then consciousness happens. This is the heart of the bispectral index, which is a FDA registered device. It's a little box that's used in surgery. Uh, they put an electrode on the forehead. It could go anywhere on the head, but since the forehead has a little less hair, that's where they tell you to stick the electrode. But literally, consciousness can be measured this way anywhere in the head. It doesn't happen as a spot in here, and then over here, and then over here. Consciousness is there, or it's not there. It's, it doesn't happen in all these specific spots, which is being taught. Roy John's lab will tell you that consciousness is, requires this spot, and this spot, and this spot, and this spot. And, um, but Roy John's lab can't tell you when a patient has become conscious by looking at the EEG. But we can, simply by looking at this. And surgeons use this box with a number from 0 to 100, uh, um, and it, it's a derived measure, but really all they're looking at is the cross-spectral correlation between slow cortical potential, DC, and gamma. The secret algorithm built inside of the patented box, which nobody knows which is inside of it, is Aspect Medical's device, and uh, they have the patent on it, but they're looking at 0.38 and 38 hertz. That's all it is. Uh, they also have a few other EEG feature detectors for being too deep. But from conscious to unconscious, it's literally just the bispectral correlation between gamma and slow cortical potentials. Now you know their secret algorithm. Um, 